If you go online, you can Google world's oldest Bible. What will pop up? Codex Sinaiticus. I was taught this in Bible college. So from then for decades, this was the early 1980s, I searched for the world's oldest Bible, Codex Sinaiticus. Most books actually only showed me one single page of Sinaiticus, John 21. But in 2009, Codex Sinaiticus came online. And thanks to Jack McElroy, I've been able to search and study his huge copy of Sinaiticus for a year and a half. In addition, all the high quality photographs are available at www.codexsinaiticus.org. I've learned way more by examining it for myself than all the lectures, legends, and lies I've heard about it from professors, preachers, and book authors. I thought I'd ask you a fun question. Never mind that Codex Sinaiticus is the most accepted but never actually scientifically tested book in history. Let's ask a simple question. Why don't we see a Bible based solely upon the Sinaiticus? Wouldn't that be interesting? Let me tell you why you haven't and probably never will see one. Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. Codex Sinaiticus, in the form we find it today, is missing 12 entire books and most of six more. That's over one-fourth of the 66 Bible books, over a third of the 39 Old Testament books. In addition, it has the Apocrypha, but only six books of the Apocrypha. Tobit, Judith, 1st and 4th Maccabees, Wisdom of Solomon, and Wisdom of Jesus ben Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus. But this is just the Old Testament and Apocrypha. The reality is we just don't have enough to make a Sinaiticus Old Testament. So much for that idea. But what about the New Testament? Aha, says the New Testament scholar. The Sinaiticus has an absolutely complete New Testament. Great! So, why don't we have a Sinaiticus New Testament? There are a few reasons, and each one is embarrassing. That's why I'm going to tell them to you. But first, let me say that there is a book that calls itself a Sinaiticus New Testament by Henry T. Anderson. But... It's not really the Sinaiticus. In many of the things I will show you, they didn't dare put what the Sinaiticus actually said or didn't say. I call foul on that. No fair changing the Sinaiticus. So to keep it simple, I'll stick with the original Sinaiticus text as carefully handwritten. I will not count its corrections, erasures, lineouts, marginal notes, or any other sneaky tricks. That seems fair to me. Ready? The New Testament has a number of one-of-a-kind readings in Sinaiticus. Matthew 13.54 says in the King James, And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. Country here is patrida. But that's not what the Sinaiticus says. It says, and when he came into his own Antipatrida, Antipatris, which is 46 miles away from Nazareth in Samaria, not Galilee. It's a clear error. So, here. Here's Galilee, there's Nazareth, and there's Antipatris. So neither, though, Anderson's Sinaiticus New Testament or even Tischendorf's English New Testament admits that, not even in a note. How about Luke 126? The King James reads simply, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Galileus. See the word right there? 
So Mary and Joseph are from Nazareth in Galilee. Everybody knows that, except the Sinaiticus. The Sinaiticus reads, Es Poland tes Judaeus Hanoma Nazaret, unto a city of Judea named Nazareth. That will lighten up your Bible study. Even Sunday school kids know that's wrong. But Anderson and Tischendorf didn't admit it, not even in a note. Let's kick it up a bit. John 7:53 to 8:11, the story of Jesus and the woman caught in adultery is completely missing from Sinaiticus. See? On the same line, it goes from John 7:52 to 8:12. But Gutless, Anderson, and Tischendorf both stuck those 12 verses into their New Testaments. Why? If Sinaiticus is oldest and best, if Sinaiticus is so good, put your money where your mouth is. Remove John 7, 53 to 8, 11 from your Bible. And while you're at it, be honest. Remove Mark 16, 9 to 20. Don't fudge and write it in italics or put a bar or a bracket around it. Don't write some big explanation. Just remove the resurrection appearances of Christ in Mark 16. But they won't sell you a New Testament without those 24 verses, even though they are missing from Sinaiticus. What about the important words of Luke 24, 51? And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Kai anafreto estonurano. The words, and was carried up into heaven, are actually not in the original writing of Sinaiticus. See? They're added in a note later at the top. That means there's no mention of Jesus' bodily resurrection in the Sinaiticus Gospels at all, Mark 16 or Luke 24. So the only mention in Sinaiticus of Jesus' bodily ascension into heaven is in Acts 1, verses 2, 10, and 11. Scholars have used this to argue that Jesus didn't actually ascend at all. Like my old professor, Bob Shaper at Fuller said, if you had a Polaroid camera, you wouldn't have seen Jesus ascend into heaven. Despite the fact, of course, that the real scriptures say that is exactly what he did. Did he base his disbelieving Jesus' ascension because of Sinaiticus? Then, these unbelieving scholars make up a three-step argument using Sinaiticus and their own evolutionary theory about the gospel. One, even though history says the order the gospels were written was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, just like all the Bible manuscripts and even Origen, these scholars made up the lie that Mark came first. Two, since Sinaiticus Mark doesn't have the resurrection or ascension in 16.9 to 20, and, or Sinaiticus Luke takes out the part of the ascension from 24.51, they made up the lies that Jesus wasn't bodily raised from the dead, and Jesus didn't ascend into heaven. Then they made up the lie that Jesus' resurrection and ascension were added to the gospel later. Then, they show that Sinaiticus Mark 1.1 1, 1, didn't say Jesus was the Son of God. But Sinaiticus still says, God calls Jesus my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, in verse 11. So based on Sinaiticus Mark 1, they stated the lies that Jesus was only a man, God adopted Jesus as his son at his baptism. 
on top of the lies that Jesus wasn't bodily raised from the dead and he didn't ascend into heaven. Brothers and sisters, that's what some text critics claim is original Christianity. So because of the textual critic, Constantine Tischendorf, claiming Sinaiticus was the world's oldest Bible, and people accepted it without thinking twice, there came the false doctrine that Jesus was an ordinary man, adopted by God at his, as his son at his baptism, who was killed and buried, but who wasn't raised from the dead and wasn't ascended into heaven. Would you buy a real Sinaiticus New Testament now? Now for some good news. Cutting Sinaiticus is a fake, a phony, a fraud, and over the past year I've learned that it was actually created between 1839 to 40 and was probably edited up through 1843. Eyewitnesses originally saw it as white. Some white pages are still in Leipzig, and you can see them online, marked L-U-L on CodexSinaiticus.org. The rest of it was colored. That's the very next page. The rest of it was colored to make it look old, probably about 1853. You can see that marked B-L for British Library. So, the world's oldest Bible isn't. You don't have to place your faith in the Codex Sinaiticus. It's not the world's oldest Bible, but it is part of the world's biggest fraud. One book I wrote that's coming out soon deals with that. The next book will go into detail about who made the Sinaiticus, where, when, and why. Guys, don't let them tear down your faith with a flaky fake. Grab hold of the rock in English, the King James Bible, and don't let it go. God bless you and have a wonderful day.